Thank you for staying with us. You're watching One and One with Ambassador Wallens and is telling us a bit about what it takes to travel the world. All right, thank you very much for staying with us. Before we go and talk about your life, that's a big one, entertainment. Let's look at the work that you did. You were instrumental, like you earlier mentioned in this conversation, uh, to bring in the former president, Ulushegu Basenjo, to Trinidad and Tobago um, uh, to secure um, the 11 countries. That was to Antigua, but uh, to Trinidad, it was for um, the emancipation celebrations. As whilst we were there, Okay. And we were having a conversation. He said he was not getting enough support and votes for the UN Security Council. And that's when I actually used my network with the chairman of the OECS, who is the prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda, to take him there. He, it was not on his schedule. Okay, so where I was actually going was you helped with, you know, Nigeria Security Council's seat in mm -hmm. the UN. Um, you have a bit of a, a background in security as well. So mm -hmm. can you tell us your impression um, of the security situation in Nigeria today? We're still struggling with it years down the line. What's your take on that? Well, I think um, it is the remit of government to secure the citizens of the country. And you have to look at all angles, you have to look at all situations, and you have to find some palliative uh, solutions to them. Um, you know, there is religious conflict, there is uh, clan conflict within, you know, territories, there's border conflicts, I mean borders within states, you know, people saying, well, this is my land, this is my border, etc., etc. I think there is quite a lot there that has to be done. I think there, there is a role for giving back to the people who are the closest to these situations, and that is chiefs, kings, religious leaders, have them into a hot house uh, um, conference and try and solve some of these problems. Because at the end of the day, when you have war, people still have to go to peace talks, not so? Yes. When the war is finished, you, you still, still go to peace talks. So why not reverse start. it? Reverse it by talking peace. Talking peace early on. Find what the problems are and solve them. Let's break this down a little to the aspect of you being an entertainer. A lot of people don't know how well into music you are. Can you tell us your first time in Nigeria? That was first like 77. Seven, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. That was an exciting period, very exciting. And I have to, again, thank President, former president and military leader, Obasanjo, for what he did. Bringing together the diaspora of Africans in one place was a great ex exposition that we had of black culture. And we all got together, we all lived in Festac as, uh, you know, as I, I was a young man then. And um, we and were in, just signed to record I was, level. I was, signed to, I was signed to Virgin Records. I was one of the first few that were signed to Virgin Records at the time. Um, but they never released the album because the album was a very, very much strong in support of anti-apartheid. Yes, I, I was, was going. I was going to get there. Tell I us was about an, I was an anti-apartheid crusader, and all the songs were Zimbabwe Freedom Song, Soweto, Black versus Black, One Love. You know, um, all these were in support of the revolutionary movements, anti-apartheid movements in the Southern African Hemisphere. So that <laughs> I was doing my my bit. As a, as a, not just as an entertainer, but as a messenger, as a poet and singer-songwriter. Based on that background, if you bring that to what we have today, that same South Africa has xenophobic attacks. Um, what lessons a, didn't we learn from that experience of appetite? Well, <laughs> you mean South Africa didn't yes, learn? Yes, South Africa yes, didn't yeah. learn. What South Africa didn't learn is the fact that you are your brother's keeper. Nigeria was their brother's keeper. You know, Nigeria helped South Africa in any which way, sacrificing lives, money, and reputation. You know, because when the world was in support, you know, of South Africa and the apartheid regime, you know, Nigeria said, no, don't forget the, 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 the nationalized companies, you know, they sent troops, they sent money, they trained people here, you know, and they are their brother's keeper. And why would you now, I call it Afrophobia, I don't call it xenophobia. 
I call it Afrophobia. In other words, you're fearing your own Africans um, because of maybe jealousy. Because don't forget, when Nigerians arrive in South Africa, they already have entrepreneurship skills, they have money, etc. And our poor brothers in South Africa who are catching up is seeing you know, uh, them come and display wealth and opportunity and entrepreneurship, which they didn't have the opportunity. So they've got to think back and say, well, why not let's join forces with our brothers? Let's, let's, let's be partners in business. You know, South African and Nigerian, let's partner in business and, and, and take it up another level. Why should you be fighting them? You have Chinese and others who are coming and making money on the continent freely. And I, you know, I, I have nothing against that. But don't forget, these are, these are interlopers. These are people who you know, are coming and seeing the opportunity that you're not seeing. Work with your brothers who understand the opportunity. They've gone there because they've seen the opportunity and they're coming in where others have left a vacuum. So join forces with them, not fight them. So much to talk about. Let's go on another break, a very short one. And when we come back, you will be uncovering something interesting not a lot of persons know in the entertainment world. Stay with us.